We've got the GMC Yukon Denali Ultimate. Hello, big boy. 6.2 liter. I'm spoiling Sport it. Sport mode. I'm spoiling it, Andrea. Ah. Uh, this isn't the engine I'd get, but Still it's kind pretty of sweet. fun to drive for a week. So what yeah. is under the hood of this thing, Andrea? A 6.2 liter V8 with a 10 speed automatic transmission, 420 horsepower and 460 pound feet of torque. Standard four wheel drive. Now the engine we'd opt for is the three liter inline Duramax turbo diesel with 277 horsepower. But check out the torque, 460 pound feet of torque. There's also a 5.3 liter V8 with 355 horsepower and 383 pound feet of torque. Two wheel drive and four wheel drive options are available. Now we've driven not this, but the Escalade with the mm -hmm. gas and the diesel, 50% reduction in the fuel by getting the diesel yeah and a tow is like a monster all right uh what do you get with this this is the denali so it's got to be pretty nice we're going to look at all of the yukons with the key standard features the base trim comes with a 10.2 inch touchscreen with google built in wireless apple carplay and android auto a 12 inch driver display six speaker audio system 10-way power driver seat eight-way power passenger seat two-way power lumbar support black cloth upholstery, a manual lift gate, and GMC Pro Safety. I think the pull button transmission, is that one of the, it's not the best, it's not the worst, but pull button is way down is on the left. Is it not the worst? <laughs> well, it could be the worst. <laughs> All right, so what can we put it in? You gotta put it in, ask for subscribe, and if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop, and then you can watch them. And we do this, a couple car review twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. So make sure to like and subscribe, but also follow along on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea to see what's going on behind the scenes, and to get a question and more on that halfway through the video. For me, it's motormouth underscore auto, and the links are below the like button. Well, just last week, we had the direct competitor to this. It was the Lincoln Navigator, full load. Now we've got the GMC Yukon Denali, full load. Yeah. Which one are you liking better? Oh, this one, hands down. Everything about this, the, the way it handles, the comfort level is better than that Navigator. I, I'm not a huge fan of the Navigator, I gotta say. Mm. One thing I like about this is that it's actually really easy to maneuver. This is a big vehicle. Check out this turning radius. It is incredible. Yeah, so this one has air suspension. And we mentioned with that Lincoln last week that it has adaptive dampers, but this actually with the top trim gets the air suspension, which is going to be good for yeah. uh, trailer towing and leveling. So that's handy. Two main differences for me, Andrea, mm -hmm. the steering feel isn't isn't fantastic, but it's yeah. way better than the very numb Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And the brakes actually have some progressiveness to them. The, the Lincoln just felt mushy. Yeah, especially that steering, it was really vague in the Lincoln. So you can raise this vehicle up to two inches and you can lower it by two inches. And that makes it easier to get in and out of this vehicle. And then of course you've got the power running boards. That's super convenient as well. The Yukon also has available magnetic ride control electronic limited slip differential, a two-speed transfer case, and available front six-piston Brembo brakes. That's a lot of stuff, Andrea. Mm. So this is really the rig if you're gonna be towing. That's really the purpose of a body-on-frame yeah. truck is it can, it can tow and it can do it for long distances, Back to why I would get the diesel. It's just going to return much better fuel economy, especially with a with a rig behind you. So Andrea usually has the fun facts. Mm -hmm. I got a fun fact. Okay. Do you know that in Canada, GMC outsells Chevrolet, mm. and in the United States, Chevrolet outsells GMC. Yeah. Maybe it's that C at the end. We kind of glom onto that as it being <laughs> General Motors Canada. But what about the C at the start? It's just interesting that there's preferences north and south of the border and the grill never lets you forget that you're driving a GMC. Yeah, I think that this is such a cool looking vehicle, really bold. It has a huge presence on the road. It's one of these vehicles because it is a beast that it's like, oh, okay, move out of her way. She's coming. <laughs> um, I think it looks great. What are the main features on the outside? Well, first off, this is a seven to eight passenger body on frame SUV and it gets up to eight inches of ground clearance. It comes standard with LED headlights, LED fog lights, 
LED tail lights, 18 inch to 22 inch wheels, and a full size 17 inch spare tire. Oh, love it. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the outside. Then we turn our attention to the inside. Now, you always hear Zork complaining that there's not enough buttons. Well, they save them all up and they put them in this. <laughs> there's buttons everywhere for this, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. The, the buttons they could have gotten rid of, though, Andrea, are the pull button transmission. We talked about yeah. it at the very beginning. That's not our favorite. A rotary dial would be better anyway. That's what GMC likes. There you I go. just find it's not very intuitive to use. Obviously, we have used other shifters that are better than this. Um, like I'm one, not sure one that I goes can, like this? Well, I'm yeah. just not sure that I can really get used to this. I, I, I haven't been enjoying it at all, I have to say. But what I do have to say is this interior is not only comfortable, but it's spacious. And it's got some great features. This center oh, console oh, wait, just, can I, be moved. I just wanted to say there's one button, Andrea. Are you you, you <laughs> jump my line here there's one okay, button watch this do it there there's the one button it pushes the center console back it moves the cup holders back for the kitties so this goes back up to 10 inches how about that so if you've got kids sitting in the back row and they have trouble reaching their climate control or the cup holders it's there for them and when you do slide it back there's a hidden little secret tray this has got 16 way power seats in our test model it's the denali ultimate and they are comfortable they've got a massage feature i think that this tan interior it's leather it's beautiful it's got cream piping and it's got baseball stitching just so well done by gm yeah all of the materials you see in here look first rate there's a nice soft padded dash pad wood with a nice grain on the dash as well and andrea mentioned all of the same details in the doors and big bose speaker grates mm -hmm. down there now comparing it to that lincoln navigator you will be hard pressed to find any hard plastic in the navigator there is more for sure in this denali you've got hard plastic on the side and at the bottom of the glove box as well but the transmission tunnel here is padded as mm -hmm. well there's shiny hard plastic in the center around all those beautiful buttons but there's a whole lot more buttons left of the steering wheel that's where you're going to have your trailer controls there's some other features but it's it's one of those things a bit confusing when you first get in this we have to figure out where the button were yeah. for certain things but that's a one and done thing once you know it's easy to find by the way there's a movement in Europe now to bring more buttons back mm -hmm. uh, there the regulator in Europe is saying cars that have everything done in the screen will get lower safety scores than if there's redundant buttons yeah it's nice to see buttons in here it's just easy to find things, intuitive to use. I like how the screen is integrated into the dash. I'd like to see more of that in new vehicles. Some other available features include heated and ventilated front seats, memory seats, heated second row seats, rear seat entertainment system, which we have on our test model, a heated steering wheel, wireless charger, a head up display, 18 speaker Bose performance series audio system, the panoramic sunroof, hands-free power tailgate, and super cruise. Well, here's me getting in the second row. One of the reasons outside of towing that you would have this is to move a lot of people around. And of course, there's plenty of legroom and headroom and the seats slide fore and aft, making it easy to get into the third row. Comparing the Yukon to the Ford Expedition, the Yukon gets 44.5 inches of front row legroom and 42 inches of second row legroom, which is half an inch more in both rows compared to the Ford. Slide the second row seat forward and climb on into the third row and there's plenty of room back there even for adults. Third row legroom at 34.9 inches falls short to the Expedition by over an inch. Lift the power tailgate even when the third row is up there's some useful space but it's really when you get all the seats down you got a lot of room. Overall cargo space is 123 cubic feet. Space behind the second row 72.6 cubic feet and space behind the third row 25.5 cubic feet. All areas are larger than the Expedition. Did you say Bose stereo? Let's get into the questions. Time now for questions, coffee and cars. Your questions from Instagram. How does the Bose performance compare to the Cadillac AKG system? Well, we just tried it mm -hmm. um, with the same track. Uh, we just did it with the Revel Audio from Lincoln uh, yeah. a week ago. I think this, if you were going to go 
AKG Cadillac, Revel, Lincoln, third place would be this system. Yeah, but I actually think this is pretty good for a both systems. Sometimes we just feel like it's a little bit flat. Muddy. Um, it's a bit muddy. This is better. I'd be okay with this. I could live with this. No I could problem. totally live with yep. this. I love the large GM trucks. I'm looking into purchasing a 2024 diesel 1500 Sierra, but was wondering if you know of any updates for 2025. I did see the Tahoe and Suburban. Just got a little refresh, so I'm wondering if I should hold off a little to see if GM does anything with the Sierra or Silverado. Okay, just want to touch on the diesel. The nice thing is, at least in this product, um, the price to get the diesel in the Canadian market, and these are Canadian dollars. Yeah. Uh, I looked at the base model, it was only two grand more to get it. When these engines first came out, they were really quite expensive. I think it was like five or six grand to get mm. it. They brought that price down, so you are getting the right engine. Um, I think they just did the the full size trucks recently. Um, they well, did the interior. I know that. So there, uh, I reached out to actually GM, and they said no. Uh, nothing has been confirmed. Look, there's lots of rumors online that says 2025. There's going to be some extensive changes, but nothing official from GM. So you always hear tons of rumors. Okay, one thing you don't know if they're right or not. The one thing about a you know buying a Chevrolet pickup truck is you want to use it hopefully you're not just swanning around in mm -hmm. it you're actually going to use it for stuff and chevrolet and their quality scores um, have been very high mm -hmm. in the last few years and if you're going to buy an existing truck that's been in production for many years yeah. that will hopefully be much more reliable for you so it's not a bad idea even if they make some changes to it to get this one mm -hmm. i believe it was last year or the year before they upgraded the interiors a little bit mm -hmm. but but there you go for such a large vehicle, I think second row legroom and headroom are lacking for taller passengers. My 2024 CRV hybrid has more rear headroom and only one inch less legroom. It's odd to me that these huge vehicles are not very big in the second row. My guess they want to improve on third row space, so they're slightly compromised the second row. Well, I think that's they're answering it. their own question, yeah. right? I mean, this is huge. And if you want more space, there's a longer wheelbase version of this. But I think that's exactly it. You know, they've got to spread out the space and you also want to have enough cargo space behind the second row and you want to have a comfortable third row. Okay. So something's got to give. So it's got an inch more mm -hmm. than the CRV, and an inch, by the way, in legroom. Because we usually, these things are done in millimeters. Yes. A full inch is a lot of extra legroom. Mm -hmm. And the one thing you got to remember, the CRV has one of the biggest for second row legroom. So that's already a, a good back seat. Yeah. There's no problem with second row space. So it's, it's modified over three rows. And this is one of the most comfortable seven to eight passenger vehicles. That third row is comfortable. I could sit back there on a long trip. Okay. I wouldn't have any problem with it. You can sit back on the way home. How's I'm going to do that. I'm gonna, and you can drive me around. Sure. How about that? You can be my chauffeur. I'll find some speed I'll bumps. Sit in the third, I'll sit in the third row. And now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? They are quite comfortable, but in terms of reliability, this is a concern in my honest opinion. Was it 2015 or so when they had moonroof problems? As a rental, this is superb. Even better if it's a work trip and you don't have to pay for fuel. We touched on it a moment ago talking about the Silverado. Chevrolet's quality scores at J.D. Power are very, very high. Mm -hmm. Buick scores well. So does Cadillac. General Motors, not so good. And I'm not sure why there's so much similarity across brands. Uh, what are the numbers? So Consumer Reports doesn't give it a great reliability score. I mean, below 40, believe it or mm. not. And then the overall score is better. They give it a 51 out of 100, so a slight improvement. But it's the opposite with J.D. Power. J.D. Power gives it an overall score of 82 out of 100, and it really shines with resale value as well, an 83 out of 100 from J.D. Power. Mm -hmm. That's the thing is, body on frame trucks from General Motors hold incredible resale value. And I think the one with the diesel, which is the one I would choose, yeah. would be sought after in the used market for towing as well. So there you go. And I just want to say that the maneuverability of this particular vehicle compared to some other body on frame SUVs is exceptional. And it also has an available 13 camera views to help with parallel parking and maneuverability. GMC's really thought this vehicle out. All right, let's get into the vital stats, like the fuel economy for the gas and the diesel and more.
Let's start with pricing. We've got MSRP pricing for the four-wheel drive models. In Canada, the SLE model starts at just over $84,000. And the top Denali Ultimate is just over $136,500. In the U.S., the base model starts at just over $63,000. And the top trim is just over $100,500. Here's the fuel economy for the 6.2 liter V8, 6.6 .6 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 13 on the highway. That's just 14 miles per gallon city, 18 miles per gallon highway. Here's the diesel, 11.7 liters per 100 kilometer city, 9 on the highway. That's 20 miles per gallon city, 26 miles per gallon highway. Towing capacity up to 8,000 pounds, and the warranty is three years, 60,000 kilometers. Okay, so you're thinking about getting a body-on-frame SUV to tow. Mm -hmm. What else can you choose? For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. At first is the Nissan Armada. It has a 5.6 liter V8 with 400 horsepower and a starting price of almost $76,500. The Ford Expedition with a 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6, 380 horsepower and a starting price of 78 grand. The Toyota Sequoia with a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 with Toyota's hybrid Synergy Drive. A combined 437 horsepower and a starting price of over $83,500. The Chevrolet Cousin, the Suburban, with a 5.3 liter V8, 355 horsepower, and a starting price of over $77,000. So there are four full-size body-on-frame SUVs for you to consider. Lightning round, two things we like, two things we like to see improved. I really like how this is laid out as a people mover. I love they have three engine choices. What I'd like to see is a power lift gate on the base model, standard equipment, $84,000 in Canada. You should have that. Yeah. I think they should add more buttons. <laughs> no more <laughs> buttons. We got enough buttons. All right. That's it for the GMC Yukon Denali, the big boy. If you like what you see, subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.